Okay, so you basically just have two tractors here on the farm. This is a big tractor, tilling, and a little bit of the cultivating, like I said. And this one is the little cultivating tractor. It's a 49, 1949 Alice Chalmers Model G. Got the engine in the back. Okay. Which is a nice feature so that you can see your crops when you're sitting looking at your crops. In the front, we've got these gooseneck sweep blades. And these are set up to weed the three rows that we grow in our beds. So these blades work the soil, the the wheel and this back are, are kind of rolling along, floating along. Okay. These brackets allow the blades to go to move up and down. I see. And then this is this is cutting into the soil. So the idea is this is just below the surface of the soil. This area here is being left untouched in between those two blades. But but this is being cultivated, this is being cultivated. And so there's three lines that are left, three parallel lines, and those are the where the crops are. Nice. Um, so those three lines would line up with these three markers. So when we're when we're planting, I will mark the fields with these, and that'll give us three furrows. And then we'll drop our transplants that we've grown, like our broccoli transplants or our lettuce transplants, into those three furrows. Okay. And we can come back with the front part and weed it without hitting. You know, if if, if you're not hitting one row, you're not hitting the other two rows. Right. Because they're parallel. They're not straight, they're parallel. Um, and then also with the big tractor, the other thing that I do that we didn't talk about is I do some direct seeding with that. So I've got three seeders that I put on the on the bar on the back, and I can fill those up with carrot seeds like I saw out there, or corn, or beets, or it's a whole bunch of different crops that I direct sow. Peas, beans, all those things. I'll dump those seeds in the cedar and then drive down, and then that's putting the seed right below the surface of the soil. Again, the spacing on those three rows would match the spacing of these and the spacing of my cultivators. Okay. So I'm able to go back and do the cultivating. Nice. Mm -hmm. We still cultivate everything by hand, but this allows us to come through very quickly. I can, you know, in a couple of hours, go cultivate a whole acre. And, you know, it's not 100% thorough, but it's a... 80, 90 percent kind of thing, and then come back by hand to finish the job off. Well, it seems like a neat little tractor. That's cool. Let's go see your double digger. Okay. So this is a spader. It has uh, just a series of eight blades. Mine does. They come in different widths. And um, w what happens is the blades make a motion kind of like this. They chop straight down, and then they 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 kind of loop back. They're making a circular motion. And what happens is they're, they're chopping up the soil uh, as you move forward very, very slowly with the tractor. They're slicing off like maybe a half inch or an inch of a, of a trench that you're working. And they go down quite far, 10 or 12 inches, maybe even more. And then as they make their backward motion, they, they catch the top half of that tilling depth, maybe five or six inches, and they, they fling it backwards against this plate. Okay. And the, the soil, if the moisture content's right, will hit that plate, pulverize, and fall back, making a really nice seed bed on top, just like you get with a rototiller. Now, if it's too dry, it'll be, you know, it won't pulverize. If it's too wet, it turns it into muddy chunks. So the moisture content really is very critical on this implement. Okay. Um, but if the conditions are right, what you wind up with is, you know, you wind up with soil that you can stick your arm down to your elbow. It's loose down that far. Um, the bottom half of that tilling depth has been loosened. The top half has been actually blended more. Um, they don't get mixed together. You know, okay, you, you keep whereas your, a rototiller would just mix them. Yeah, it mixes them. And part of what you're doing with the, the whole thing I was talking about, like the life of the soil and trying to keep your soils healthy, you know, most of the life of your soil is just in those top couple of inches. That's where all the biological activity, where the oxygen is permeating, the worms are doing their cycling up and down. Um, so when, you, when you're rototilling or tilling down 8 or 10 inches and you're sort of blending it all up, it's not that you're killing it, but you're losing sort of your concentration of your life. You know, so if you can try to avoid that, it's better. Okay. Um, Good so, tip. Yeah. And it's a great tool, and they, they have come down in price quite a bit since I bought mine, and they're, they're make, they make them in all different sizes, so you can get them even as small as, like, for a software rototill. Oh, okay. They have them for, like, a BCS rototill. The fans here one, but I could never get it... You can see it's kind of pulled apart. I could never get its uh, chain to work. I got it. I mean, I used it for several years, 
And then one year I just I spent all this time. I had Jim Harden like manufacture these pieces, these teeth for it for me. And okay. I could never get that. It, it would work, but then it would get stuck. And I finally gave up on it. So I, I need to actually get a bigger one. This is the one I'm using now. It's, it's pretty small is my main problem with it. You know, I can only hold like three or four buckets worth. And then I got to drive out there and drive back. Right. The one I'm driving a lot more. But it's chain driven, so it's more reliable. Right. Huh. Yeah, sometimes the old technology works better. Yeah. And then does something, I guess, oh, okay, on the bottom of the uh, bed there, that all moves and moves it to that the back. That thing moves back, yeah, there's like a, as the chain runs, there's like a beater arm somewhere that pushes, yeah, pushes this big wheel around. Okay. Just like one notch at a time, and that turns the chain. And is this all driven from the tires? All driven from the tires. Super old technology. And do you have control over various aspects of it with these levers? Supposedly, although mine is not working that great, so I just basically have on and off. Okay. But supposedly, one of them would control like how much was letting out, and one of them would control how fast it was moving. I see. But for me, it's just kind of either on or off. Yeah, neat piece of equipment. How old would you guess that is? I don't know. 50 years, maybe? The guy I bought it from was like 90 or 80 something, <laughs> you know? Yep. Probably the easiest $500 he ever made. There you go. <laughs> All right, well that was great, Adam. I had fun and I'm sure we learned a lot today, so really appreciate it. And hope sure. to see you next time. Great, thanks for coming out. Yep, thank you.